couple years ago, she wrote an essay for an article for Allure magazine where she stated, and I quote, she feels that she's running out of time to matter in society's eyes. So imagine she's at 30 years old, she's an attorney, she's Miss USA, she's working for Extra TV, and she's doing a lot of other things. I believe she had her own business, and she's saying that she is feeling that she's running out of time. Hello, my loves, and welcome to today's Sandra Said What. Um, by today's title, by the title of this video, you may be able to tell what we're discussing today. It is a very serious subject um, that is near and dear to my heart, and especially because I'm in the area of psychology, I am, you know, in the healthcare field. Um, I think this is a very impo important topic to discuss, and that is the death of former Miss USA Ches Chesley Christ, the passing by suicide of Chesley Christ, depression, and a couple other things. So I did debate making this video for a couple of reasons. One is because I know that once celebrities pass or people that are in the public eye, once they pass, a lot of the fans, they tend to like tag in the family members, you know, posting and remembrance of the person that passed. Um, you know, basically all of social media is bombarded with their picture and their memories and their videos. And that's all fine. That's a way to honor the per person and, um, share their memories but for me personally i usually think about the family members having to be bombarded a lot of people also like to tag the family members um i think about the family members always being bombarded with all of these pictures keep reminding them of the their loss not that anyone is in the wrong or anything it's just it's a difficult thing so i didn't want to be another voice that continued to um echo what was happening the second reason why i debated this is because I, suicide is a very su serious subject. Um, depression is a very serious subject. And um, I want to make sure that when, it's a very sensitive issue, when I discuss it, that I really take in consideration everything that it entails. So after weighing the pros and cons very carefully, I decided that this is a very um, important topic that I should discuss, especially on a platform such as mine, where I talk about men mental health, where I talk about psychology, and I personally can tell you that I can relate to um, Chesley and everything that she was dealing with while she was alive. So if you're not familiar with who she is, Chesley Chris is the Miss USA of 2019 who recently jumped to her death um, in New York City where she was living. She was very accomplished before she was Miss USA. She was actually an attorney and also she worked with Extra TV after becoming Miss USA um, as recently as December of 2021. Um, she was also part of the pageant Needless to say, she had a lot of things going on for her and she was quite an accomplished woman at the age of 30. Chesley's um, Miss USA win is particularly important because I believe that 2019 was the year that all of the big contest winners, especially the pageant winners, were black women or women of color. And I quote that very lightly. It's not a term I like to use. Uh, Non-white non women, let's put it that way. I learned of Chesley when she one of her videos popped up on my TikTok feed. At the time, I didn't know who she was. I didn't realize she had passed. I think on the day she died or the day before she died, that's when one of her videos passed, um, popped up on my feed. I didn't have any idea who she was. And... Um, I, after her passing, I did go to her page and I was watching a lot of her videos and I found them to be extremely relatable, especially as um, a woman in the professional setting. Seeing Chesley, she was a very eloquent, um, very lighthearted, very happy person based on her social media posts, right? But her mother, after her passing, made it known that she actually suffered from depression. Her mother actually only recently learned, knew, learned about it when she told her right before, not right, you know, moments before, but you know, not too long after her death. Um, she, she did tell her mother that she was a highly functioning depressed person. And I personally can tell you that I am also a highly functioning depressed person. Chesley did interview a lot of big celebrities from Gabrielle Union, um, Taraji P, and she did advocate a lot for mental health awareness. And I will get into that, which I feel personally was her way of trying to reach out and see how other people are handling their mental health issues. A couple years ago, she wrote an 
essay for an article for Allure magazine where she stated, and I quote, she feels that she's running out of time to matter in society's eyes. So imagine she's at 30 years old, she's an attorney, she's Miss USA, she's working for Extra TV, and she's doing a lot of other things. I believe she had her own business, and she's saying that she is feeling that she's running out of time for her to matter in society's eyes. She has, she did also on her social media speak about, um, you know, racism that she faced in the professional setting, which we'll, we'll get into, which I can also relate to. Um, she also spoke about, you know, discriminations that she had to endure as a mixed race person. It is truly a tragedy, the fact that we can, as black women, be accomplished, be intelligent, be beautiful, be everything that the world tells us to be, and it's still not enough. Typically, when people pass, there's always this lingering question. People are left with questions like, how could I have tell? What could have gone? What could I have done? Or they look like they were just doing everything they need to do. Usually, I can only speak from my experience personally. I know myself. I have goals. I set goals. I have my business. I have my um, career. I have um, other things that I want to do that I'm working on. And I have my goals lined up. I go from the next. I'm taking care of my everyday problems um, without anybody knowing. And it's not that I'm actively trying to hide it. It's just this is how I function. This is how I know how to function. I don't go to people to ask them to do X, Y, and Z because the reality is everybody have their own lives. Everybody's busy with this and that. Everybody um, have their responsibilities to tend to. Um, I'm not going to say that it is a conscious decision to try to hide the depression from other people. I think a lot of us, we know how to go and go and go. We go from one to the next. And a lot, a lot of times, we miss it. I think it is extremely sad that this had to be the outcome for a woman who struggled and continued to show up every day until her last day. From what I've been seeing on social media, especially on TikTok, majority of us are depressed. Majority of us struggle from anxiety. Majority of us, um, we, our lives, we feel like our lives are upside down, which is why TikTok as a social media platform performs well, right? Compared to Instagram, versus TikTok, you don't have to come on TikTok perfectly, right? You don't have to be perfect to be on TikTok. You come, you speak your truth, and you will find out so many other people you didn't even realize um, were dealing with the same stuff. Just like a lot of us, we tend to say, oh my gosh, we're all living the same lives. We all have the same experiences based on what somebody says. It's the same thing for people who are depressed. I would have never guessed that so many people were depressed until I got on TikTok, until I saw people actually sharing their experiences. and. Truthfully, it's really heartbreaking because we live in a society that is, unfortunately, profit over people. Even if you're depressed, you still have to show up. And even if you're depressed, you still have to, you have um, responsibilities to tend to. Even if you're depressed, money has got to be made and you have to partake in whatever structure and system that is already set up. And a lot of the time, a lot of people, you know, get overlooked when they are actually dealing with depression. The same way it's very easy to connect with people on TikTok, it's also very easy to disconnect with people in real life. It's very, especially with um, COVID-19, um, especially with um, us, we've been what in, in lockdown for like almost three years now. It's very easy to step away, especially in this culture, this culture particularly, um, it's very easy to disengage and be away from people for a very long time. You literally could live in the same building and not even know your neighbor. Um, it's very easy to not have someone there for you all the time because, again, everyone is living in the same system, in the same, in the same culture. We have to keep going and going and show up and work and um, deal with things. And people expect everyone, everyone expects everyone to be okay at the end of it. And the unfortunate reality is not all of us are. We are also living in a culture of being hyper aware of the things that's happening to us. And it, I, it would, I would be remiss if I spoke about Chesley, I spoke about her depression, I spoke about her accomplishments without speaking about the fact that she is a black woman. The black women specifically, we get mistreated the most in this society. If you care about people who have depression, if you care about people who commit suicide, if you want to change the status quo, you cannot, ne you cannot neglect the fact that black women particularly, 
we deal with a lot of things even though she was a lawyer she did speak about how when she would go to the courtroom people wouldn't think that she was a lawyer they would assume maybe you know she was a defendant or somebody who's being represented by the lawyer but not the lawyer herself or some people walking up to her and inappropriately touch, touching her hair she mentioned that and to the point where I believe she even stopped practicing law and that's another point I feel like I can relate with her I don't want to be a nurse for so many reasons I love being a nurse I love the knowledge I have I love what I want to do I love what um, the um, nursing culture is supposed to be representing and I love the nursing profession I have the utmost respect for the nursing profession as a whole but seeing it in practice so I can definitely understand that you know in the professional settings she was having she was struggling in personal life I'm sure she was struggling as well we don't know what was going around her that's another reason why I didn't want to make this video because I don't want to speculate on anything in particular I'm sure being you know with whatever company she was working all these companies that are supposed to be quote unquote tolerant that are supposed to welcome black people and accept them the microaggression especially you know in the fashion world and reporting news and stuff like that the microaggression even the white people who don't believe they're racist are extremely racist they're, they may not be overtly racist but covertly and even when they don't believe they're overtly racist they still are because the statements they make I'm sure a lot of the things that she had to deal with weren't easy and that's why I can absolutely understand what she was dealing with I can relate to so many of the things that she was saying and it seemed that she was really reaching out and when you're hyper aware it is very difficult to turn that off I know how it is for me especially on a daily basis you know you notice everything you pick up on every little thing that's being said and where everyone else around you may miss it or when you try to express it to other people they minimize it or um, there is no active action being taken against what's happening to actually fix it so you feel like it's a lost cause you feel like you feel hopeless honestly sometimes I do feel hopeless I feel that this world is not gonna change call me pessimistic but it's hard to it's not gonna happen um, racism is not going to end black people are not gonna be stop being mistreated um, we're not going to stop being disrespected and that's why I feel that when she was saying she feels like she's running out of time to matter like I've accomplished so much and still I have little to no value based on what's continuing to keep happening and there is no change in sight that is a very very sad thing so to take her depression seriously we also have to take her racist experiences into account from a depressed person I can tell you I have all the resources I know how to use them however I know for a fact that one it's the way the system is set up is you are supposed to deal with your depression but you're also supposed to be able to function in this chaotic system so it feels like a endless cycle of keep getting you keep on get on you keep getting back on to the same roller coaster when we take a look at um, Regina King's son who recently um, took his own life by suicide one of the things that stuck out to me was that I believe they, the family put out a statement saying he cared so much and I felt like that just stuck out to me because I feel like we are the people who feel the most in a society that doesn't truly value or appreciate what we have to offer and unfortunately I don't know that society will ever truly value or appreciate what we as black women have to offer from our hair to our looks to the way we speak um, we're belittled we're mistreated we're lied on I will never forget it I'm telling you I'm so traumatized from Ashland University I have never ever in my life have seen so many grown women lie and when I tell you blatantly lie and when I turned to the people who were supposed to protect me which were the school administrators which was the school president he called me a liar and on top of that we have to constantly deal with 
um, the constant social images of black people being mistreated. Um, we have to constantly deal with people in the workplace who believe that they're tolerant, therefore are beyond learning what true tolerance is. Imagine being a regular, a normal person. You're dealing with depression. You're dealing with all these things. On top of that, you multiply it by 10 being a black woman because everything we do is wrong in society's eyes. It, again, it is truly a tragedy. Um, there are resources available. I personally am available if you guys need resources for anything. Um, I know it's easier said than done. I know it seems that, you know, it's never going to end. I know it seems that, um, you know, people have, once someone help you, it's only going to be for a short term, and then they go on about their lives, and it, used, it may seem like it's hopeless, but it truly isn't. Um, it, it, it truly does break my heart because I can fully relate to what she was going through. And I get it, right? And I, and I still think that it, it is very sad. So I wanted to make this video to remind you that you value, you are valued, you matter. You're not running out of time. Okay, don't let society pressure you into you have to have this job by this, you know, age. You have to have a car, this car by this age. You have to have children by this age. You have to have this. You have to have, don't let you, oh, you have, especially social media, you have to be traveling here every other month. You have to be showing your new location. Don't let society trick you into believing um, that, you know, the material things truly are those that matter. They, they're not. You are the most valuable thing on this planet. And I wanted to make this video to remind anyone who's dealing with depression but specifically especially black women because I know what we go through on a daily basis I know the disrespect that we get on a daily basis I know that we're not even valued even in a financial sense to where we get pennies on the dollar compared to anybody else any other group and I know how that feels. I know that it's hurtful. I know what it is to invest everything you have. I know what it is to want to give. I know what it is to feel all the feels, feel everything, all the emotions, and feeling hopeless. I know what it's like. And it's not the end. It's not, it doesn't have to be. It is just a reminder, again, that you matter, you value. I didn't want to make this a cheesy video, a cliche video. Yeah, everyone says this, but it's so true. It is true. It is true, and I'm, I'm truly at a loss for words. I just want to send out well wishes to you guys, all of you. Um, it truly breaks my heart to think of how many people are truly going through these depressive phases. Depression may show up differently for different people. For some people, it may be sleeping all day, not waking up. It may be not bathing or, you know, but for some people, it looks like just getting up every day, going about your business, taking care of what you need to take care and handling your business and going about your day. And no one would guess it. And it's not that you're actively trying to hide what's happening is just this is just what I do I, I get up I work on my business I do this I do that and I take care of what I need to take care of and that's how my life is it's just your life that's just your life right and depression just shows up here and there and you deal with it you put it to the side but it's always a lingering thought and sometimes a lot of people are depressed don't even they don't even realize they're depressed fortunately for me I realize I recognize my symptoms and I said, I'm depressed. I'm a highly functioning depressed person. I realized my symptoms. I noticed I'm getting nervous about certain things. I realized that I was uh, struggling with anxiety. I was waking up in panic attacks. And that's why now I have sought to speak to someone. There's no shame in talking to someone. Even in the least, you know, there's someone who understands what's going on. Therapy is not supposed to tell you how to live your life, but help give you the tools and instructions and advice, you know, on how to uh, better cope with what's happening. 
Um, I hope you're doing well. If you're not, please send me an email, Sandra said what, at gmail.com. Please reach out to me, and I truly mean this from the bottom of my heart. Just there are online resources. I will personally go out of my way to help anybody who needs it because I know what it is. I know how it feels like. And I know just how big of an impact it has on your life. So, again, you guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I will see you next time. Bye.